What's going on? I have been meaning to do this video for quite a while and I've kind of been putting it off, but I've been asked to kind of explain some things over the past few days about what I'm doing with my system with NixOS, Hyperland, and kind of the Tiling window manager workflow and stuff in general. So I want to go ahead and take this time to use this video as a explanation of how I use my system, what my system is comprised of, and the mentality and the design behind the tools I use. This is not me saying that you should go out and use these tools or the other stuff. Like, you know, I use Hyperland that is a tiling window manager slash Wayland compositor. So it's not a desktop environment. Most desktop environments that you might be familiar with, if you don't know what desktop environment means, that's like GNOME, Mate, Enlightenment, XFCE, etc. It it those are all desktop environments which are groups of programs that create an environment that you call your desktop. Uh, Hyperland is one part of, I guess, what you could call my custom desktop environment. I'm obviously using a desktop. There is an environment, but all of the components of that desktop environment are of my choosing and of my config. Like they all have these programs that we use when you're not using a desktop environment have config files programs that you might use inside of a desktop environment have config files as well these are normally referred to as dot files because they're typically prefaced with a period so that's why and these files for me and what i'm using uh create the aesthetic of the actual program. So let's just go ahead and dive in. We'll start off with talking about Hyperland since we have been talking about desktop environments. So I'll switch over to my workstation or my desktop here. I'll go ahead and I can quit out of this and close it. So when you load into Hyperland by default, this is what you're going to be greeted with with my config. Now you might have a different wallpaper, but that's irrelevant. You're going to get a bar at the top and there's not going to be anything else. This bar does not have a start menu or anything like that. It has, this may or may not work because you do in the config have to set up the device that it's going to use. So this tells me my Wi-Fi signal uh, strength. And then I have info from Pulse Audio, the uh, if I was to like load up the Pavu control, you the input and output devices here I'm using, it's telling me the levels they're at. I've got my CPU usage, and I can hover over it. Uh, most of these with relevant details that are extra, when you hover over them, you'll get a drop-down menu. So this is telling me my core usage and all that stuff, RAM usage, my disk space usage, and then time. Now, I also have a sys tray over here. This works like any other sys tray. It's completely normal. And this drop down menu here. Uh, this is my notification center. This is Sway NC. This bar up here is Waybar. And the wallpaper here that you're seeing, this is set by a program called SWW. So even though I am talking about my Hyperland, you know, desktop, I do kind of need to go off topic from the get go and start talking about other programs that I'm using because really in all honesty, all Hyperland is, is a compositor and a window manager kind of inseparably tied together for Wayland. So when I load up a terminal here, Hyperland is what determines the animation that comes up, the border, around the window, where it goes, what the layout is for opening up windows, and what the key bindings are for stuff. So if you want to get my configs, I'm using NixOS, which makes it very easy to go and get them. I will talk about that here in just a second. But if I go into this Git repo I have here called ZanyOS, and we just 
vim into config slash I've got a hyperland folder in here and uh, inside of this folder you'll see I've got animations auto start hyperland key bindings theme so if we go to the hyperland config file what you'll see is we have some monitor configuration I've got you know like a big logo up here but it's uh, in mine I do actually have a comment here on how you configure the monitor settings. I'm using an automatic configuration. So I'm saying any monitor that's hooked up to the system, make it the highest resolution you can for the position, auto it, which means the default, like it, the, the way it's going to default is it's just going to place every monitor to the right of the first one detected, which is typically your primary display. So it works for me i've never had a problem with this configuration this works great and one for the scale factor since i'm not using any high dpi displays at the moment and most people aren't out in the wild so it works great you can always change that if if need be and then i've got some window rules in here some layer rules some input settings uh for like you know you know gestures and stuff like that i also bind the caps lock key to a super key. So on my default config with Hyperland, I can press the caps lock key or the windows key and something else uh, to have it work as a key binding. Uh, and we can get into key bindings. A lot of what you're going to be doing on Hyperland, pretty much everything is going to be done with key bindings. So I've got key bindings for pretty much everything. Uh, Mod shift S is going to change the wallpaper to something else. So now we've got this pretty wallpaper here. I can do mod shift shift S again and have it change. So um, Firefox got a key binding. A whole bunch of stuff has a key binding. And then I've got um, mod shift enter will bring up uh, Rofi dash Wayland. And I've got a nice theme here where you can select a program to launch if you know you don't have a built-in key binding for it i've got a whole bunch of other stuff in here so you can go through and look through the key bindings for how do you close a window how do you split do pseudo tiling um, you can move windows mod shift l will switch them uh you know to the left h to the right JK up, down. You've got all those key bindings now. I normally just use the modifier key and click and drag a window um, and then right click to you know resize. I don't normally use key bindings for that just because the mouse works great for it. So yeah, uh, it's up to you. You can go through here, change these key bindings, play around with them. I've, I've got them here. Now that we've kind of talked about what Hyperland is, it's definitely not for everyone because it it is a tiling window manager and tiling window managers are not for everyone. You may or may not really enjoy this kind of workflow. I enjoy it as I'm typically already using the keyboard and the mouse anyway. So it's nice to have, use key bindings a lot. So I, I enjoy this kind of workflow and I also enjoy uh, you know, splitting up the screen. Like, I, I just enjoy the way Tiling Window Managers work. You may not. Now, when it comes to my uh, my NixOS config, which is how I set up my system, I run NixOS. And before we actually get into how you could reproduce my system with NixOS, I do want to go ahead and actually explain nix os and really what it is so i've got my own repo up here so you can read why you might choose nix os and what is nix os here but i'll go ahead and do it in the video because why not so it's a it's a very different way of approaching your system management than any other distribution out there it is declarative so you have configuration files like you might have for programs but for your system and that defines what packages are installed the users on the system the packages that are installed for specific users 
uh, et cetera, et cetera, defining services, it's all going to be in those configuration files. Everything you do outside of that, non-declaratively on the system, is more like for a development environment. Uh, it's not really going to be saved. It's not you know, kept around on the system. Everything else like that is kind of temporary or uh, like a virtualized environment. It, you, you have your Nix environment, Nix shell. So the, the core of Nix OS and what you need to know is you have configuration files that define what's on your system and how your system's set up and what's running on your system. So those, it makes it very easy to reproduce the system because you can just take these files give it to someone else. And on Nix OS, everything hardware specific goes into a specific hardware configuration file. And you can always just regenerate that file on a new computer. So you take your configs that you have on one setup with all of your users, all the packages you want, all that good stuff. You throw it on a new system, gener generate a new hardware config on Nix OS, or pull in the default one that it installed with, doesn't really matter. And then bada bing, bada boom, you have a perfectly good Nix OS system that was just like the one you had before. Beautiful. So that is obviously a reason why you might choose it. Another reason is the package manager is incredible. It's got 80,000 packages. So uh, if you're an AUR junkie, you're probably gonna be fine in Nix. And then there's the rollbacks, which is really awesome, or generations that you have with Nix. So every time you make changes to your system configs and rebuild, it builds a new generation. And the old one you can always fall back on. You can also remove them and stuff. It's not that complicated to do so, but makes uh, you know messing up not as dangerous as it would be on other Linux distros. So these are some reasons why you might choose it, what Nix OS is, all that good stuff. So now, how do you reproduce it? Let's get into that. Nix OS is a really fantastic Linux distribution and a fantastic way of reproducing my system. So I have this Zany OS repo that you can go and check out. This has all of my system configuration inside of it. And the direction is pretty simple and straightforward. So what you're going to want to do is install Nix OS. Uh, you can go out, they have a GNOME and a Plasma desktop live ISO. You're not installing Nix OS with that desktop. That's just for the live environment of the install. So don't panic when it's, you know, like you're not locked into GNOME or whatever from the get-go. When you're doing the live install, it'll ask you which desktop environment you want to install. Do you want to install XFC? Do you not want a desktop at all? Do you want GNOME? Like, you know, whatever. You get to choose. So you're going to install Nix OS, install it however you see fit. Um, make sure you've got Git, you know, installed. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, you just add Git to your configuration.nix, rebuild the system with the sudo nix os rebuild switch command, and then boom, you, you have Git installed. You want to enable flakes, and I actually have all of this guide in this repo. So I do also say please remember to change username and hostname in flake.nix because if you go inside of this right here, we've got settings for host name or username. So you do want to set that up before you start building out systems. And then I have the steps to reproduce my system. So after you've got Git installed, you're just going to clone this repo, change username, host name, as I've already said, replace your hardware dash configuration dot Nix with the one inside of the workstation or laptop folders. I, I will be addressing this. This is actually uh, hopefully you won't have to do this step. Hopefully I can get the configuration to generate the hardware configuration for the system it's running on for you. So you don't have to do that. But for now, uh, inside of your slash Etsy slash Nix OS folder, you'll have a configuration and a hardware configuration. That's where you added Git when you installed Nix OS. So just copy over the hardware configuration and 
overwrite the one that's in the workstation or laptop folder, depending on what you want. Enable flakes in that in your default configuration inside of the Etsy Nix OS, because you need to enable flakes to be able to use flakes, rebuild the system, then go into the rebuild uh, the repo folder and run this rebuild switch flake and give it the flake you want to use and you're done you it, that will install everything that i have on my system now you'll have all of my programs you'll have all of my config files for all of the, all of the programs that all are, are installed you'll have my scripts fonts you'll have my user profile picture when i log in you'll have my wallpapers you'll have everything also you probably want to go into the home.nix file before you do this and change like you know your git get information if you want to and a lot of these i might make into variables and put inside of the flake that way you don't have to like i'm going to try to make it so where you will never have to go into anything other than the flake.nix file to change any information but uh for right now it is a work in progress i haven't been using nix os for a long time and I very much plan on continuing to improve it. Now, with all that being said, I think I've done a pretty decent job of explaining what Hyperland is, how I use it, and what NixOS is, but let's tie it all together in my system configuration. Inside of my NixOS Git repo, uh, or my Zany OS, which is my next OS. You, you get my point. You can go to the repo in the description below. Uh, you can also just find it at my GitLab, GitLab link in the description as well, but I'll link straight to the flake.repo. You can check in there, and it's got config files for Hyperland, for NeoFetch, SwayNC, Waybar. Uh, actually, Waybar is, I believe, configured inside a home manager, but all of the config files that are inside of the config folder in there uh, are managed and sim linked to the home system using home manager. So I recommend you, no matter what, if you want to check out my system and kind of use my system as m maybe a launch pad for your own custom Hyperland setup, or if you're just interested in NixOS and learning how you configure things so you can use something completely different like i3 or whatever you'd like to use. I do have all of that stuff in there, and I definitely recommend you check out Home Manager because that's, that's a really useful tool for configuring your actual user system and all of that good stuff. So I highly recommend anybody out there who's interested in what I've been talking about. Uh, even if you weren't necessarily looking for a video like this, I hope this has piqued your interest. I also do want to say thank you to all the people up on the screen because these people support and this channel is funded through these great people over on Patreon, as well as the incredible YouTube members I have here and you know, all of you liking and subscribing, it tells YouTube I'm, I'm a good boy and I deserve a little bit of money. So thank you. It, it does actually mean a lot. And the support for this kind of content has been overwhelmingly positive. So thank you guys very much for that. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in another one. Hope you have a great day. See ya.